You are now listening to the Going North Podcast with your host, author and speaker, Dom Brightman. And every Monday and Thursday, you're going to hear the voice of a different author share their stories, expertise, and their struggles that they had to overcome in life to leave you inspired to get more out of your life. Be sure to not only listen to this episode, but share with others, connect with the authors, and always advance others to advance yourself. Now let's get on with the show. And today on the Going North podcast, we're back at you again with another author, but not just any author. One of the beautiful things about being an author nowadays is that it's not the main thing you do. There's other things because we have a serial entrepreneur in his house and not just any serial entrepreneur. He's also a CEO and a remote hiring expert. He is the CEO of FreeUp.com and you're pro- and for those who've been living under a rock, for the wonderful folks at home, it is the one, the only, Nathan Hirsch. How are you today, sir? I am great, man. How are you? Doing fabulous, man. Glad to have you all, man. You've been over on over 150 podcasts, and you got your own coming out in the very near future, man. It's, it's great to have you on. Thanks. Yeah, it's an exciting time. It's going to be fun to switch the, the switch and interview people instead of being interviewed. So I'm looking forward to it. Woohoo! Yes, today, yes, today, from guest to your own host. That's what I'm talking about. Making your own platforms, taking over the world one mind at a time, right? <laughs> exactly. And I was best with you about the war takeover part, don't worry. <laughs> 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 well, as all introductions, they're not allowed to be 24 hours long, so mind filling in some cavities where I may have missed some fillings. Yeah, I mean, I was a longtime entrepreneur. I started a multi-million dollar Amazon business out of my college dorm room, and I really scaled that business using remote freelancers and virtual assistants. And I got pretty good at it, but I always just wanted a better, faster way than posting on the job board sites and getting 100 applicants and interviewing them one by one. And, and so I, three years ago, I created my own platform, FreeUp. And I really took everything that I didn't like about those platforms and changed it and kept everything I liked. So we get thousands of applicants every week, virtual assistants, freelancers, agencies from all over the world, vet them, take the top 1%, let them in, and then make them available to our clients quickly whenever they need them. So our clients like it because it's free to sign up. There's no monthly fees. They can put in a request and we introduce them without browsing. And on the back end, we have 24-7 support in case they have even the smallest issue and a no turnover guarantee. If someone quits for any reason, we cover replacement costs and get them a new person right away. So it's been a lot of fun growing this platform for the past three years, and I've been able to help a lot of business owners from all around the world. Congratulations, man. Congratulations, man. Looked up a but your background is kind of amazing how it's like you start off in Amazon in the early days before all the extra rules come into play, and then you – then the colleges send you those cease and desist letters like, hey, what you doing? You're, you're running our hustle here. What, what you doing there, buddy? <laughs> yeah, and then that actually happened to me back in the day when I was selling books on Amazon. Um, I, I started buying and selling people's textbooks using my summer beer money, and my college sent me a cease and desist letter because I was cease and desist letter because I was taking up too much of their business, and that was actually a blessing in disguise because I started trying to figure out how to sell other products besides books. Um, which led me to the baby product industry. So if you can imagine me as a 20-year-old single college guy selling millions of dollars of baby products on Amazon, that was me. <laughs> That's still probably one of your favorite memories right there, just to tell folks. It's like, really? It's like, why are you selling baby products, bro? Like, what does Gerber have to do with this beer, man? <laughs> exactly. It was really tough to explain to people at the time because no one really understood Amazon or e-commerce or, or what was going to happen in, with the whole um, growing marketplace. Yeah, you're right about that. Growing like a big old tree, or should I say like a big forest. <laughs> Forget the tree. <laughs> What's next on the horizon for the wonderful Nathan? 
Well, right now I'm really focused on free up and how I can grow the platform. I mean, we just launched our agency program. So we have agencies on the platform now too. And um, we're launching a new software update coming out actually this weekend. So by the time this airs, it could be out. And just a, a lot of exciting things building on what we already have. I mean, whenever you start a business, you never know what the client feedback is going to be like, but it's been overwhelmingly positive and, and we're looking to continue to get more feedback and improve upon it and really change the hiring experience across the board. Amen to that. And that's something we really need nowadays, especially with all the folks just needing help, which is outsourcing their work and plus thousands of applications. Like how the heck you sift through all that, right? And then you just make it easier for people. Exactly. I mean, we spend a lot of time betting people, not just for skill, but for attitude and communication as well. So, yeah, I mean, once we let them onto our platform, it's so tough to get in that freelancers are really careful to only take on projects they can do at a high level. Um, And in addition, I mean, we're there. 99% of the time, the freelancers do a great job, and there's always going to be that 1% of human error or mistakes. And if it happens, we, we jump right in and we make it right with the client and move forward. Indeed, yes, indeed. So any advice for those out there who may have fell into the 1% where human error kicks in and how to diffuse that situation? Yeah, I mean, you have to understand, no one has a 100% hiring record. And there's always things that are going to be out of your control, whether the freelancer is good and they just weren't a fit for you or there's an emergency or something else happened. You can't focus on those things. You have to focus on what you can control. And that's how, where you find the people, your hiring and interview process, how you set expectations, how you communicate. And if you keep focusing on improving all the parts of what you're working on, um, everything else will take care of itself. And you might never get to 100%, but the difference between 30 and 40% and 80 and 90% is a pretty big difference when it comes to hiring people. So I, I, I recommend focusing on what you can control. Don't, don't give up on hiring. Just like if you have a bad marketing experience in your business, you don't just say, oh, I'm never going to market again. <laughs> don't try to do everything yourself. You still have to hire. You still have to delegate. And, and you can come up with a really good system over time. Yeah, man. Amen to that, dude. It, <laughs> it, it's basically darn near impossible to do everything by yourself if you want to have things at a great level and just have a level of excellence with it. There's just not enough time for one person to try to do everything at once, even if you break it down. Exactly. I mean, there's so many things that go on a business owner, and eventually you just run out of hours in the week. There's very few $1 million or $5 million a year entrepreneurs that do everything themselves and are solo. If you want to scale, if you want to grow your business, hiring is really the only way. That's right. That's right. Hire to take you higher, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Probably go on a t shirt or something. <laughs> well, as with the hiring and firing and installing multiple businesses, what's probably some really three lessons that you probably learned thus far? Three big lessons that you learned for those out there who may just be at the side hustle status and they want to eventually get to that point where they can go full time with their side hustle, make it their full time hustle. Yeah, I mean, the first thing is understanding the different levels of people that you can hire. Um, There's three different ones, basic, mid, and expert. So basic is for systems and processes you already have in place. So you hire followers, non-U.S. virtual assistants, five to ten bucks an hour, and have them follow your directions. The mid-level stuff is project-based, graphic designers, bookkeepers, writers. You're not teaching someone to be a graphic designer, but they're not consulting with you either, and you're going to hire people to do these projects that – can take them off your plate because you're not good at doing them. And then you've got the experts, the high-level freelancers, consultants, agencies. They're bringing their own expertise to the table. Um, and then and you use them to, to execute high-level tasks and strategy. If you don't know how to do Facebook ads, you could spend the next six months learning how to do Facebook ads, but that's not a good use of your time. You want to hire experts that can come in and, and really – take it, hit the ground running right from the beginning. So my first tip is to make sure that you're hiring the right level. My second tip is setting expectations, making sure you're on the same page with someone right from the beginning. It'll save you tons of time down the line, black and white. Um, what's good, what's bad, how you communicate, the scope of the project, the due dates, really set expectations right from the beginning. 
And, and my third tip is really start a feedback loop where you can give people feedback and they're not going to take it personally and they're going to work to improve and tweak what they do to fit your needs. And then also accept and receive feedback. I mean, some of the best ideas and feedback that have made me the most money came from other people. And that's because I created an environment where people wanted to give feedback and wanted to improve the business. And that's really what it's all about. So make sure you're hiring the right levels, make sure you set expectations and make sure you're creating a good feedback loop. Oh yeah. That's right. The feedback loop indeed. And that's really crucial to the feedback piece of just giving and accepting it because folks can give it, but they can't accept it and vice versa. So any advice for those who may need to accept feedback, especially now. Well, Betty, that's probably the better starting point for that is what was probably the best way to give feedback in this age of folks who tend to get hurt real easily about everything. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I just don't work with people that take feedback personally. It's not a good use of your time as an entrepreneur. I, I like to surround myself with people, and I'll tell them up front that I'm a direct person. I'm going to tell you when you do something good, when you do something bad, and when you get feedback that's not what you like, you should use that to motivate and, and change. And I, if someone is taking it personally, I would honestly move on. It, it's so tough to – I mean, you can tell someone, hey, don't take it personally, but if they're constantly doing it, it's a really tough to change people like that. So – Again, just focus more of your time on what you can control, and the thing that you can control is surrounding yourself with people that don't take feedback personally. Beautiful. And I'm guessing the best way to give feedback would be just to be straightforward, direct. I ask people every week, hey, how do you like your job? What's going well? What's not going well? What feedback do you have for me as a leader, as an owner? And, I mean, I, you might have to ask people a few different times, but, I mean, you really have to set the expectation that, that people have to be giving feedback. That's probably a, that's actually a wise policy, too, especially with everything that you do. And it's like, it, I don't have time for your BS. It's like an entrepreneur. It's like, like I mean, emotions are good if you know how to control them but you shouldn't let them get in the way of actual progress that's actually wise while they're not dealing with folks who tend to let themselves get butt hurt over nothing yeah i mean i i completely agree it's all about focusing on the things you can control and surrounding you with with people that you actually um enjoy working with oh yes indeed yes indeed so we got a lot of millennials kicking butt nowadays in today's society that folks don't want to put the spotlight on. So for those out there, millennials out there who are just not getting their, they may be an entrepreneur, they're starting the first business, and they just hired their first few group of people and in a way kind of like the leader of a group. Any advice you want to give to like a new millennial leader as they start the leadership journey from your experience? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's very few naturally born leaders. It's something you have to work on and, and, and really perfect over time. We talked about listening to feedback, um, but also just seeing what works and what doesn't work for the type of people you're surrounding yourself with. I mean, there are, there are some people that, are, that can lead any group of people. So make sure that you're surrounding yourself with the type of people that will listen to you. Make sure you factor in some trial and error, trying different things, whether it's how to run meetings or how to throw different parties or how to reward people. What are all the little things that go around the day-to-day -day operation that keep people motivated? And I would also focus on how do you get everyone to think of, of the business as their own. That ownership is, is so important. If you can get people to buy into what you're doing and, and want to be a part of it, that's going to make leading so much easier. And it's a tough thing to do, but you can do it if, if you put the time and the work and the effort into trying. Uh, that, that's, that's a major key right there, get folks to buy in. That's right, and take ownership. Yeah, it, it's so important. I think a lot of people that think that hiring just by giving people a lot of money is motivating. It's really not. I mean, I talk to freelancers and virtual assistants all the time about who their favorite clients are, and across the board, it's not who pays them the most money. It's who makes them feel most involved in their business. Ah, uh, some involvement. Nice. That, that's indeed. I guess it, in a way it kind of goes like, hey, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, so I guess it – has that caring aspect of like, hey, you actually care about how much I'm involved in your success and making it happen and want to be a part of it. So, so that's that's really awesome right there. 
Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't consider myself a, a natural born leader. I, I kind of did it over time. I mean, back in the day, I had this manager who was, he, he was good at like business wise, but he was a terrible manager. He would micromanage everyone. People were stressed out. No one was motivated. People hated working for him. And I mean, I, that's kind of what I learned from. So when I, when I started my own business, I kind of had those tendencies that he had because that was my only real experience dealing with a manager. And, and it took me a while to listen to feedback and realize that wasn't the best way to motivate and to work with my people. And so you can, it takes a lot of time, but I mean, if someone like me can go from that micromanaging, overbearing style to leading a team of people and having a very low turnover, anyone can do it. Uh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And the good thing about those folks are bad managers to give you an example of what not to do down the road once you figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's really what. I, whenever I fall into those tendencies, I'm like, God, oh, don't be like him. That's right. Send a picture of him on the desk. Be like, nope, not you today. Not you today. Probably draw some devil horns on the head. Maybe put a clown nose on the nose. Let me stop. <laughs> Maybe not do that. Go that far with it. But <laughs> Yes, indeed. Solid advice, indeed. Solid advice, indeed. Well, did some digging and found out that not only you also have your own book about hiring and hiring employees, but also a co-author of another project. So any advice for those who want to take the route of getting their work published in an actual physical book? Yeah, my business partner actually wrote the book. It's called Free Up Your Business. It's not just about hiring people. And it focuses a lot more on remote hiring, virtual assistants, and freelancers and employees. But uh, it's really how we scaled our business, both businesses, um, my Portlight, which is my Amazon business, and Free Up, um, and, and all the different things that, that we learned along the way, from diversifying hiring to lead generation and, and keeping the business lean to, to, yes, a lot of hiring tips and stuff in there and motivating people. So um, I, I definitely would recommend checking it out. It's called Free Up Your Business. I, for us, we use the book as just one part to, to help us. I mean, we, we kind of have the mentality that, yeah, we can provide good people, but if, if the client doesn't know what to do with their business or how to handle those people afterwards, it doesn't do much good. So we try to provide a lot of content around that, and, and I would really know your audience um, and make sure that you understand who you're speaking to and what value you're going to add. Cause there's so many books out there that, that teach people different things and you need to really understand your audience and, and get it out there. And we use the book it kind of as a lead generation magnet. We use it for clients who might be struggling or might be up and coming. And I mean, we're, we're not charging hands over fist cord. We give it away for a pretty cheap price just so people can just to cover the cost, just so people can have access to it and can learn from it. Amen to that, indeed. Yeah, because folks are just publishing books like crazy books and all the other good stuff, and it's like, yeah, you got to be very meticulous about what you choose to read about that, and yeah, it, it is one heck of a lead generation tool. Yes, For indeed. sure. I mean, yeah, I think very few people just start a business around a book. The book should be a complement um, to everything else that you're doing. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> the book can't be the end all be all, but it's got to be something else. Some someone might want some more beyond the book in in a way because it kind of goes back to what you said earlier. It's like yeah, you can bring them great people, but they need to find out what to do afterwards. So got to find a way to give them that icing and the cherry on top of the cupcake. Yeah, exactly. And again, even with the book, I mean, we had tons of revisions. We were asking for feedback and trying to figure out how to make it better and better. Sweet. So I'm guessing there might even be another version coming out soon. Yeah, it's not in the plans right now, but it, it could happen. The book took a lot of time. I mean, it was a six-month-plus project, and right now we're really focused on free up, but I'm sure it won't be the last book that we write. Sweet. Sweet. Bro, I got bigger fish to fry too, right, with the free up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, can't, you can't be writing books every year and continue to grow a business, and at least in the way that we run our business. Those folks, a question like to ask every guest is that if you were to wake up tomorrow and you were 18 again, but this time in the current year of 2019, what advice would you give to yourself? 
I would start putting content out earlier. I, I feel like, I mean, I, I took seven years of running a business and learning a lot before I put any content out there, whether it was my book or my social media or my videos. And I definitely wish I, I started sooner. I think it, it, uh, it was a personal thing for me. I, I didn't feel comfortable in that environment or sharing my stories, but it, it's something you just overcome by doing it over and over. And so I encourage you, if you're someone that has an idea or you have a purpose or you have something to share, put start putting out content. Don't worry about what people think at first. Just get it out there and you'll learn a lot and make it better and better over time. Beautiful indeed. So don't wait to put out your content, folks. Put it all out there. That's right. Well, all, all the good content, all the good content, not the personal content. <laughs> the, the, the TMI stuff. <laughs> If you ran a stoplight at like six years old, where you're supposed to, that's what driving, but the real business got. <laughs> <laughs> well, all righty, for those who want to keep in touch with you, what's the best way to keep in touch with you? Yeah, if you go to freeup.com with three E's, my calendar is right at the top. You can book a free meeting with me. Mention this podcast, create a free account, and get a $25 credit to try us out. And, yeah, I look forward to helping people with their hiring needs. You can also check out my book, Free Up Your Business, or the Free Up blog and the Free Up YouTube channel. We're posting a lot of great content. Woohoo! That's right. That's right. Check out all this content. and Set up one of those free meetings. Get to know Nathan even more beyond the podcast. I should say podcast. My man's probably going to be on 300 by the year. Is over, and he's probably going to have, like, what, 50 episodes up by the end of the year for your first podcast, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal. Woohoo! All right, there you, folks. There you go, folks. Keep in touch with the wonderful Nathan. Any uh, parting words for wonderful listeners, Nathan? Yeah, thanks so much for, for listening. And, and don't give up. Being an entrepreneur is full of ups and downs, and, and just keep fighting through it. Keep learning a lot every day and, and making adjustments and changes, changes to your business. Hey, 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 how's it going? How's it going? Thanks a bunch for your listening ears, and it's time now because it's here. Book number two is finally here. Stay the course. The Elite Performers, Seven Keys to Sustainable Success. And you can pre order your ebook copy today by heading over to Amazon.com and pressing that Buy Now button for only 99 cents. It is a low cost investment in advancing yourself into your greatness. So let's go ahead to Amazon.com, type in Stay the Course, look for the book with the big fat red letters, Stay the Course, and the compass pointing north. And yours truly, Dominic Brightman, is the author. And I thank you in advance for all that you do. Go out there and dominate.